After a lovely summer day, Grandfather has lit a fire and called Leo, Michael and Lily. They come as quickly as they can because a fire means a good time and not least good stories. No one can tell Bible stories like Grandfather can. It's really nice and warm here. I was getting a bit cold, so this is really nice. I love sitting around a fire. Yes, me too. This day has been absolutely perfect. I feel like it's so easy to be happy when we are here. I don't think I've been grumpy once while we've been here. Do you sometimes get grumpy, Leo? It can happen. But sometimes it's more like I kind of get sad. At school, anyway. At school? How come? Because recently, it's kind of been happening that people think I'm really lame because I believe in Jesus and what's written in the Bible. It has? It's just some people, but they say things that make me feel really stupid. It almost makes me want to just pretend I'm not a Christian, but that doesn't feel right. I know that's no fun, Leo. You know what? Jesus actually told his disciples that they would experience the same thing. Because the world doesn't want to believe, said Jesus. And that's why we who choose to believe aren't always understood. Why did Jesus tell them that? I believe he said it so they'd know beforehand. But also to tell them that they would get a huge reward when they choose to hold on to their faith anyway. So you mean that we shouldn't be embarrassed because of our faith? Absolutely not. I want to give you a Bible verse, which is a promise from God. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. To draw near to God, does that mean to pray to him? Yes, that too. But it also means to fight for your faith and to do that which is God's will. Then God will be very close to me, especially when I experience something difficult. Do you want to hear a story about someone who did just that? Yes, yes. please. Once the king of Babylon attacked Jerusalem and took many Israelites captive. One of the men taken captive was called Daniel. He was taken as a prisoner to Babylon. Daniel was a special young man. He was very talented and the king of Babylon quickly realized he could be of use to the country. Daniel and his friends, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, were chosen for special training so that they could serve the king in the palace. The king had decided what things they were allowed to eat and drink so they would stay fit and healthy. But Daniel and his friends couldn't eat it because God had given the Israelites really special laws about what they were allowed to eat and drink. The food the king gave them was actually the best food you can think of. So it would seem very strange to ask for something else. But for Daniel, what God thought about him was more important than what the king might say. Or what the others did. So he went to the man in charge of them and asked if he and his three friends could get the kind of food that God's laws allowed them to eat. Now God put a care for Daniel into the heart of the man in charge of them. He wanted to help them, but he was afraid that the food that Daniel wanted to eat wouldn't keep them as healthy as the others. And if that happened, he would be in big trouble from the king. Daniel trusted God and suggested that they try the diet out for 10 days. They would get vegetables to eat and water to drink, and then he could see how Daniel and his friends looked compared to the others who had eaten the king's food. When the 10 days were up, it was clear that Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego had become healthier and stronger than the others. God was with them and helped them so that they could continue to be faithful to God's mm. laws. God also gave them knowledge and understanding about all kinds of literature and wisdom that they studied at the palace. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams. When their training was over, they were led before the king to be interviewed by him. 
and none of the other young men could match Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach or Abednego. So they served the king. And when the king asked their advice in matters which needed wisdom and understanding, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm. So when Daniel and his friends did what they knew God wanted them to do, then God helped them. God doesn't forget anyone who wants to obey him. He will always help them. But the story doesn't stop there. And what happened next? The years passed, and one day there was a new king. His name was Darius. He was pleased with Daniel and the good job he did. He gave Daniel a high position in the country together with two others. But Daniel was much smarter than the other two. For this reason, the king wanted to make Daniel responsible for the whole kingdom. The other two didn't like this at all. They were so jealous that they started to look for things Daniel could have done wrong in his work. But they couldn't find anything. Then they said to each other, we won't find anything to accuse Daniel of unless we find something to say about the God he worships. They knew that Daniel believed in God and that the most important thing for Daniel was to keep God's commandments. So they made a cunning plan. They went to the king and said to him, King Darius, may you live forever. We have all had a meeting and believe that the king should make a law that says, for 30 days, anyone who prays to anyone other than you, O king, whether to a god or a person, shall be cast into the lion's den. Make such a law, O king, and write it down. Darius didn't realize what it was they were scheming, so he sat down and wrote out the law they had suggested, and the law the king had signed would never be reversed. As soon as Daniel learned of the law, he went into his house and his room, and he had an open window that faced Jerusalem. Three times a day he fell on his knees in prayer and praise to his God, just as he had done before. Then the men stormed in and found Daniel as he prayed. Now they had something they could go to the king with. Pleased with themselves, they went before the king. O oh, king, did you not pass a law that for 30 days anyone who prayed to anyone other than you, O oh, king, should be thrown into the lion's den? The king answered, Indeed, that has not changed. Then they said to the king, Daniel doesn't care about you or the command you gave. He prays three times a day. When the king heard this, he was in despair. He loved Daniel, and he didn't want him to die. He thought and thought about how he could save him. Right up until sunset, he tried to find a solution. Then the men rushed to the king again and said to him, O king, remember that no law which the king has given and no decision he has made can be changed. Then the king had no choice but to say that they should fetch Daniel and throw him into the lion's den. But the king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you worship continuously, save you. And then they threw Daniel down into the den and closed the entrance with a large stone. Afterwards, the king went to his palace. That night, he couldn't eat or sleep. He was so restless because of Daniel and what had taken place. Early in the morning, as soon as it was light, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he reached it, he cried out anxiously to Daniel, hoping that he might still be alive. Daniel, you are the servant of the living God. Has your God, whom you worship continuously, been able to save you from the lions? Then Daniel answered from the bottom of the lion's den. O king, live forever. 
My God sent his angel and closed the lion's mouths, so they didn't harm me. For I am innocent before him, and against you, O king, I have also done no wrong. The king was so happy and told the soldiers to lift Daniel out of the den. He came up completely unharmed, for he had trusted in God. He wasn't afraid to say what he believed in. The only thing that was important for Daniel was to stay close to God. No matter what would happen or where he was, he would do God's will. And God stayed close to him. That's what I want to do too. Yes, me too.